In this video, I will demonstrate a fast, easy, and accurate method for making templates for custom pattern work. I do this a lot in the shop. These are two templates that I made for this current project, which is replicating this design based on a photograph. So a designer sends me a photograph and I have to change the proportions to look right for the dimensions that they specify. And that's easy to do on my CAD program. But then I use the CAD program to make a exact one-to-one -one scale printout of what I'm going to replicate. And that gets transferred to a wooden template. And this is the spray adhesive that I use to glue the paper to where it needs to go. And this is 3 8 Baltic Birch, which is a really great material to have in the shop. And it's the ideal choice for making templates like this. It's the 3 8 Baltic Birch or 10 millimeter. It's solid hardwood throughout, so it's got a good wear surface for the bearings on the routers. And uh, you can use half inch or other scrap plywood, but I find that this Baltic Birch works the best. And this is one of the brackets. I have to make 16 of these wooden brackets. And these are a couple extra ones I had. There's a couple different methods for securing the workpiece to the template. The easiest method, which I use here, is just drilling a couple holes and screwing it right to the workpiece. And then because this is paint grade, I can get away with that. And then I just fill the screw holes later on. And that's faster than clamping or unclamping. You can use double-sided sticky tape. That also works if you don't want to screw right into what you're working with. Or you can make a platform and a more complicated jig setup and use these toggle clamps to secure the workpiece to the template. So these are the router bits that I'm using in this current project. I'm doing a lot of half lap joinery. And so I use these two pattern bits to clean up the half laps and get them nice and crisp and accurate. And this is the pattern cutting bit that I'll use to cut those profiles on the thick wood. And this top bearing can be removed for doing the initial pass. And then I put it back on to do the subsequent passes. It's an expensive bit, but really great to have, very versatile. And so I will use my CAD program. I'll just show how this works to generate an exact one-to-one -one copy. If you have a CNC in your shop, this video will be entirely useless because I'm doing it the old school way, but still incorporating the computer design, which provides the speed and the accuracy to generate these printouts. But it's a lot faster than tracing anything by hand. And uh, I'll just do a quick introduction to the rest of the project here. These are the materials that I'll be working with. Some pine for the extra brackets. This is spruce framing lumber, Douglas fir 4x4, which I'll use for the feet on the base. And this is 8 quarter poplar, which I will make the half lap joinery with and glue together. I like working with the poplar because it cuts better with the routers for making different kinds of profiles. And the Douglas fir, for example, can be a little bit problematic with pattern work. You can see there's some internal stress fractures called honeycombing, and that can wreak havoc with router bits. So it's a lot more splintery than the poplar. The poplar has a nice kind of greenish heartwood color, and it glues really well and generally cuts better for making different kinds of joinery. So I use poplar a lot for paint grade construction. It's a little bit more expensive than 2x4s and 4x4s, but the poplar has almost zero ability to bleed through on paint finishes, where softwoods, especially pine, can have problems with bleed through. These are some of the screws that I'll be using. I use regular number 8 wood screws that have square drive and these are some construction screws 
that I use for making these types of heavy trestle table bases. And this is a screw, a number 10 three inch screw, which I don't show in the video, but I use this to secure the zinc top to the base. And that part is not shown in the video because I had to ship it separately because this piece was actually quite large. This is a regular four inch deck screw. If this screw is a specialty product that I really like to work with. It's called Ledger Lock. It comes in five inch and three and five eighths. And I use both those sizes for constructing large bases. And it saves a lot of time because otherwise I'd have to cut more joinery and do another glue up. But you put four of these in a four by four and it's rock solid and not going anywhere. And for 20 bucks, it saves about a day of labor doing extra joinery cuts. So that's what I use. I like the Ledger Lock the best. There's a lot of different varieties to this type of construction lag screw, but this one has a hex drive, which is pretty much indestructible. And I like to use the impact driver to fasten these down. A lot of the other screws have star drive. It's very common on deck screws and construction screws. But the star drive, especially with the impact driver, it can spin out. The bits tend to break easier, uh, whereas the hex drive never spins out, never breaks, never had any problems with it. So it's a really great fastener. Expensive, but does save a lot of time and labor. So I will go on to my CAD program. I'm using a program called Delta CAD. I've done some videos about this before showing how this program works and it's a really easy to use program and so i'm just going to show how to generate the one-to-one -one scale printout and the process of making these templates okay here is the delta cad program i'm using delta cad version 10.0 which is the latest version and you can zoom in and out get a close-up of these details. So this is the bracket that I want to replicate on a computer printout. I'll do a quick demonstration just to show a variety of different ways to make circles, arcs, and curves. You can make circles from a radius point. You can make a partial arc of a circle, half circles, quarter rounds, and you can make a circle arc from three points so one two three that's somewhat useful you can make ellipses of a variety of different angles and sizes i don't do too much with ellipses and this is a more complex curve using three points you can just kind of play around with it to do a different variety of curvatures Here's a common function called the spline function, where you can draw a complex curve using as many points as you want uh, to make all kinds of different things. And you can add points called nodes to modify the curve, or you can take them away, delete the nodes. So those functions I use for making a variety of different shapes, curves for matching profiles. So here is the process of printing in exact one-to-one -one scale. We are going to go to select and select this bracket detail here and open up a new page. So file new. And at the bottom it says enter scale. The default is one. We're going to leave it at one. You can change the scale as you're working on a drawing by going to Options, Drawing Scale Units, and you can play around with it. And this scale just gives you the arrows on the dimension lines to look more appropriate to the size that you're, uh, that you're working with. Uh, so we're going to leave it at 1, and then go to Edit, Paste, and that is going to paste that bracket line. I'm just going to add a couple more lines to complete this shape. And these lines will reference the edge of the template that I'll be gluing this thing onto. So I'll cut these lines with a straight edge and a sharp knife. 
when this prints out. I'm gonna add some dimension lines here just to double check the printout so that it's accurate. And go to File, Set Print Region. And at the bottom here, it says Scale, Print Scale 0. We're gonna change it to 1. And it gives you a print preview right here. And that's pretty much it. So then go to File, Print, and then hit OK. And that's going to print out. So if, uh, if your thing is too big, let's say that you know the, the curve goes out to here and doesn't fit on the page. So now we go to you know set print region and it's going to print on two pages which actually isn't that difficult to work with. You just kind of cut the margins off the page and tape them together and you can make a larger size template if it doesn't fit on one page. But anyways, th that's just one way you can do it. So we can check our print now to see if it's accurate. And you can see that the print accuracy is very, very high. And so that's giving an exact printout so need, no need to lay out any lines or trace any patterns by hand doing it this way.